So, Brent, it's nice to have you back at the desk. Uh, ADP was weak. Yields took a cue off of that and came down a bit. The 10-year at 473. Um, how do you see things right here? Jolt strong, ADP weak. Uh, the 10 year is at 488. Now we've got a reprieve a little at 470. So right now it's rates, rates, rates. And so if rates come down, you're going to see names like Tesla go up. You're going to see some utilities go up. You're going to see, you know, the stocks that have been most beaten down move higher. But I think, though, that we have to settle in that although we're not going to get this parabolic move that we've seen continue to go higher, that now, though, the 10 year ceiling before was four and a quarter. That is now the floor. And so now we've, I think we're going to bump along the, between 425, we'll say 480. And I think that will be challenging longer term for the market. But right now, it looks like we have a good old bounce, like pretty much off that 200 day moving average with the S&P. Lots of folks, Joe, watching the yield curve, uh, including Jeffrey Gunlock. Uh, De-inverting very rapidly, he tweeted. Uh, should put everyone on recession watch, not just uh, a recession warning, not just recession watch. If the unemployment rate ticks up just a couple of tenths, it will be a recession alert. Buckle up. You want to opine on that as we are sort of transfixed by what's happening in the bond market? Jeffrey is focused on the exact place within the market where all the viewers should be focused on. In the last two weeks, the spread between a two and a 10 year has moved from negative 80 basis points to negative 30 basis points. It is very clear to me that we are at the early stages of a governmental balance sheet recession. We actually might actually be in that recession right now. The consumer is weakening. They are cost conscious. This morning, it, the oil inventory statistics, gasoline, Scott, the four week moving average for gasoline demand is at a 25 year low. The impact of rising rates is affecting the real economy right now. Did you hear what Citi said today? Their data about credit card spending, rapid deceleration, the fifth consecutive month of decel in, in credit card spend. To your point. And it's affecting areas of the market and industries within the market that we thought were unable to be penetrated. Think about the support that the renewable energy trade got from the Inflation Reduction Act. What's happening right now in the renewable energy trade? It is literally imploding. If you look at the ETF, the clean energy ETF, the ICLN, it's down 30 percent. The solar ETF's down 34 percent. The pain for Nextera Energy and Nextera Energy Partners, it's not stopping. Renewable energy needs to borrow today to fund the projects. The economic weakness, it's here. It's here right now. And by the way, that doesn't mean that stocks go down. And I think that's exactly what the strength in the mega caps is telling you. You know what I almost feel like? You know, there, Clarida was giving an interview, the former vice chair, uh, Jason Snipe, a little while ago and said the Fed might be done hiking rates. Huh. Now, you get a lot of Fed speakers, but when it's a former vice chair, uh, now at PIMCO, obviously, Rich Clarida, maybe it carries <laughs> a little more weight about how people look at it in the market, try to read through the comments to get to, you know, inside the room itself, uh, where it's all going to happen uh, moving forward. Um, is that in part what we're seeing? So if the Fed, in fact, is done, a little bit of a, a weakening economy off of the, off the hot burner, yeah. Uh, is good for stocks at this moment. Without a doubt, Scott, I think, you know, Bryn made a, made a point earlier about ADP and, and the jolts data that we've seen over the last couple of days. Obviously, the jolts was a surprise to the upside, more jobs available. That's a concern for the Fed in terms of wage inflation, right? So then we saw some lighter ADP numbers, rates start to pull back a little bit. Now we see the NASDAQ moving a bit. But, you know, as I, as I look to the fourth quarter, you know, here we are, obviously, today. Um, you know, I think about seasonality, right? And I think about when I think about volatility and all that we've experienced over the last couple of weeks, I do think uh, I look over the last 40 years, the S&P is up 4.6 percent, you know, during the fourth quarter. I think that that's a main point to, to make sure that we pay attention to. Also, you know, 81 um, percent of the time that the S&P is up. So, um, yes, we have earnings in the next couple of weeks. I think that's also going to play into it. And I think they'll be relatively strong. So I think that although Joe is making some valid points on just the consumer and the weakness there, I think there are some other valid points as it comes to earnings. We just got to get the, the hot sizzle off of rates for a moment, right? We can't watch, Jenny, the yield on the 10 year go up every day. Right. Yeah. Right. You, know, you, you get up to 480 yesterday and you're like, uh, we were asking the question late in the day, are we going to get over 5% by the end of the month? I'm like, maybe we get to 5% by the end of the week at the rate we're going. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's why stocks were unsettled. So we come off the burner a little bit, and it's no surprise that we've 
you know, got a, a little bit of relaxation for the moment.